Hello my soccer universe, this was quite an entertaining semi-final, against all expectations I have to say, because the more I looked at this game, the more I expected it to stoop down to Didier Deschamps level, yeah, I underestimated this Spain team and what Luis de la Fuente has been creating there. I was more focused on will the substitute, especially Jesus Navas fare well against Kylian Mbappé, no? That was not the issue. That was absolutely not the issue. And the game even started against my wishes. I wanted Spain to score early, to see what the French can do. It actually was good that France scored early, because we then saw what the Spanish can do. And, well, there was a little wobble in there. They really did it. Yamal scoring one of the goals of the tournament. What a brilliant shot. And then France had to earn it, and they didn't earn it. Spain are deservedly through to the final and I was thinking throughout the match do we see a changing of the guard here you know France has been since the latest 2016 up until now the preeminent team in Europe the team that everyone said this is the best team this is the highest talent and that does not change per se however as a team Spain look much better and Spain is very young do we see now the change that now Spain get the upper hand in Europe again and Spain are the team that everyone wants to beat like they were 10 15 years ago the envy of Europe that is for me now the big question. Is it really the changing of the guard? I think the signs are there. The superstar is with France, Kylian Mbappé, who has been probably one of the disappointments of the tournament, but I want to give him a pass with the nose. I mean, this has been bugging him all the way through, and for that reason, I actually can see, yeah, was not his tournament because of that. However, when I look at the young Spaniards and the young superstars there, I think Nico Williams is a star in the making and especially Lamine Yamal. Yes, he is only 16, he will turn 17 just before the final. It's always difficult to tell and, you know, will he be overplayed like a Pedri or so on. But the talent is there. This guy is special. And you saw it with that goal. Before we talk about the game, Jersey matchup bingo. Man, this game drove me nuts. Honestly, because I didn't see France with white pants. How they suddenly came out with white pants, it made it so easy. I mean, from the get-go, as I said, it will be Spain in red against France with white and Spain probably with the dark pants. And then, yeah, but France have not been playing in white pants at all. Maybe Spain have to change pants. And I thought Spain will be in red, white, red, which actually I think would have been a cooler matchup, I have to say. But it worked just fine. I mean, it was the full pajama suit for France, but they didn't play anything like they're sleepwalking, at least at the beginning. I said in the beginning, the big questions were, will, especially Jesus now, how will he fare against Kylian Mbappé? And, you know, we have Nacho back in the defense. We all knew that Dani Olmo against Pedri is probably almost a one-to-one. -one. Probably gives Spain a little bit of a different dimension as well. So I wasn't really not worried about that. And from the get-go, Spain were around France's box. It was with the first attack where Kylian Mbappé gets through. He was playing without the mask. What a risk to take, to be honest. But I guess the mask has been bothering him so much. In any case, first action from Kylian Mbappé. He gets past Navas, puts a cross in, Colomiani heads it in in the ninth minute. It's 1-0 France. And you could tell that Spain was shocked. And then there was a crucial moment where Rabio is running through. And there's Mbappé on the outside. And Navas clears him out. That was the save of the game almost because with that yellow card that he deserved, France did not have the major chance to make it 2-0 and this 2-0 would have taken advantage of a little Spanish wobble. But you at that moment feared about Navas because he had the one chair where Mbappé got behind him and you had the one situation where he had to just clear out Rabio. As I said, at that moment it seemed like France might get a grip on the game and then Yamin Lamal gets the ball, makes a really wonderful body movement, wonderful curl shot via the inside of the post into the net. Brilliant goal. And from that moment, there was only Spain. Because just a few minutes later, a uh, ball comes box, is cleared. Dani Olmo takes it out of there with a beautiful touch. Kills all the movement off the ball, takes it on the side, takes a shot, and he has Kunde then puts it in the net. UEFA in the end gave it to Olmo and I think based on his skill he deserved to have that goal. When I saw the replays I thought the shot might have gone wide. I don't know. In any case the goal is given to Dani Olmo who has been not only a perfect joker for Spain but has been one of their better players I would even argue. And from that moment on Spain were not looking back. 
there was hardly anything coming from France. Yes, the game has slowed down a little bit. And the one thing I have to say about Spain is that they can kill off games in the old style as well because they have this great passing and ball retention capability that France simply do not have. And yes, France have a lot of aggression in midfield. Reminds me a little bit about the discussion in the mid 2000s when you know we had all these physical midfielders and then came Spain with all the pass, 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 pass. And I think we've seen now something similar that France wanted to add a lot of oomph in midfield and all the creativity go to the wide players and up front, but it never really worked for them because Spain took that part of the game. And so it goes 2 1 into halftime probably the best first half and it was so against all expectations because we thought that France if they have the lead they will kill off the game and in a way it was fine that France took the lead because now Spain needed to show us what they can do and boy did they show us what they can do. Second half I think it started early with a highlight save from Mike Magnol. That was probably the best French action of the entire night. Nico Williams got behind the French defense and Mike Magnol sprints out perfectly timed tackle to take off the ball and then dribbles past another Spanish player as well. Yeah, probably hurt his butt a little bit on that one, but that is magic Mike for you. Other than that, Spain were a little passive, I think for the first half an hour, but they didn't need to be much more active, I have to say, because there was a Theo Hernandez chance that he puts over the bar, yeah, wrong foot. And then in the 80th minute, there was Kylian Mbappé having probably the best chance of the game and also putting it over the bar. And I didn't quite understand it because when you see the replay, the ball was not bouncing. It was just rolling there. He mishit it. That adds to the miss that he had against Austria. So really weird stuff as well. Spain in the end looked really comfortable. Then did not even go for the third goal, which with some more directness, they might as well have gone. But in the end, they didn't need to. They just killed off the game. There was hardly anything coming from France, although they threw everything on, you know, from Kamavinga, Griezmann, Barcola, who actually had a few actions where you said, ah, there is some danger there. As soon as Giroud came on, I thought, yeah, now the France game is going into desperation mode. Giroud didn't add anything. I don't even think he had a touch in the box. I love Giroud, but he's a little bit past it at this moment. I also like that Del Defente this time kept his young wingers on. He took out Murata and Olmo uh, for Oyar Sabal and Merino to, you know, again, make it a little bit more solid in, in the middle. The one thing that was also very clear in the entire match, the German public did not like Kukurea. Every time he hit the ball, big boost. What's his fault? Yes, he got the hand on the ball, but the ball was shot. There has nothing to do. Why all the hate towards him? I don't get it. I think Germans are still bitter about that penalty. From what I hear now, I hear it over and over again. Yeah, it was not a penalty. The directive was there was no other penalty, so please get over it. I also want to mention that I really found the entire composition of the fans in the stadium rather weird. I mean, there were small pockets of Spanish fans right behind the goal, small pocket of French fans right behind uh, the goal. But other than that, it was a pretty neutral affair, which looked weird. I mean, many Germany fans, but you also could see quite a few Austria fans. There was a head of the tournament that thought, yeah, Germany and Austria could meet in Munich for the semi-final. In any case, it was a weird composition. I would have loved that UEFA does a little bit of a better job there to have, you know, a little bit more fans of the teams involved and not so much neutrality in there. But, you know, we'll get more of that in the final, I would say. And I would also think for the next semi-final as well. So Spain are in the final. Fun statistic, this century, whenever a Spanish team made it to the final, and this includes now not only international competition, but also the Champions League, Europa League, and so on. Whenever a Spanish team has made it to a final facing a non-Spanish team, they have won that final. This century, whenever Spain are in a the final, they win that final. They have lost one final so far. That was in 1984, the Spanish national team. It points very much to Spain. And they have been the most convincing team I think you could say this after the group stage already, even after the Italy game, I would say from that moment on it was clear, this Spain team is something special. Let's see who they will face after tonight's semi-final between the Dutch and the English. Will we get similar surprise that England is suddenly opening up and the Dutch can show us a little bit or do we get the turgid affair that we are expecting? That I think is for me the biggest question. I really want to see how this England team will fare against the Dutch. However, this Dutch team has also not been super convincing overall, but at least they have the individual quality, something that the English have not faced in this tournament yet. I can very well see this going to penalties. Both teams are longing for a long time for a trophy. The Dutch since 1988. 
the English since 1966. Since these trophies, the Dutch were overall the more successful team. I mean, reaching uh, World Cup finals, reaching many semi-finals, but then, yeah, England also reached the Euros final. And as of late, I would give the English the advantage. England should be considered the favorite there. Spain against England, what a final that would be. Spain against the Dutch, I think would be my preferred final, simply because I really like the Dutch and I think it would be better football in general. The two teams that play a little bit more posy football, that, that would be great. However, it would be a nightmare for the kid match up. It would be an absolute nightmare because I think both teams will have to change and we'll see something really weird in the final. But you know, on the other side, if it's Spain against England, I think it will be a very straightforward affair. Any case, let me know your thoughts on this semi-final between Spain and France. Also, where do you think Netherlands against England will go? Do you think we have seen a change of the guard from France to Spain? Any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this, and I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.